Charles Baker, he and his wife have passed away now a few years back, but that's who I purchased this information from, all these culture sheets. But he was, he was a weatherman, and so he, and, and he was into orchids, he grew orchids. And so what he decided to do was do culture sheets that would take the records, the climate records from the nearby station, weather station or climate station. And then he, he took those and then together with all the, together with all the other literature that, that there was on that orchid, he decided to, you know, he, he would put together, you know, how would, how would you grow this orchid based on the information from the climate station and, and all the, the, the various records. So in this case, for Encyclia Tampensis, he used climate station number 72,211, which is in Tampa, Florida. And he has the latitude and the longitude and the, and the altitude of the climate station and in this case, he did not adjust. Now I'm gonna show you some cases where he adjusted because the orchid typically is not growing right on top of the climate station. And so sometimes the orchids in the wild are growing quite a bit far away from the climate station. So as a, a person that is an expert in weather, you can do some adjustments for altitude. And we're gonna look at some of those. But here's, here's the information that he has. So he has station, the climate station uh, in Tampa, Florida, and he has record extreme temperatures. So this is it from Tampa. So if you're living in Tampa, your record extreme temper temperatures are 98 degrees Fahrenheit and 19 degrees. So 98 degrees Fahrenheit is the maximum temperature, record temperature, and 19 degrees Fahrenheit is the lowest. And this gives you some idea as to extreme temperatures that your orchid will be able to withstand. So let me go back now. One, one notice about these clear days here. See clear days at 6 a.m., clear days at 12 p.m. Um, I've got to tell you to be very careful with this information because orchids don't typically grow under the sun. Uh, they grow typically under trees. So here you want to be careful with this information because if you might have um, like with Prostachia uh, marii, marii, you will have a huge number of clear days where it grows, but it grows under a very heavy um, a tree copper. And so the, the clear days don't really give you, uh, you know, a useful information in that regard. So let's go back and look at temperatures. So these are temperatures for Tampa uh, throughout the year. You can see how the temperatures vary throughout the year in Tampa. And then, we can look at rainfall, and this is rainfall and humidity for Tampa. And this gives you some ideas on how to grow that orchid. And Charles Baker will have information on the rest period as well and the growing media. So if there's a rest period, he's going to tell you what that should be and what growing media is recommended based on the research that he has done on you know, asking people who grow it and also on people that have written books on how to grow this species. This is the Charles Baker description based on the, the original taxonomist writing for the origin and the pseudobulb leaves, inflorescence, flowers, and so on. Let's go back to our original screen. Here in this lower, the, the lower right corner, if you click Baker, you see that button there, Baker, you're going to come up with a screen that looks like this. I already pulled it up because it takes a little while to load up all the culture sheets. You can see it has 4,763 culture sheets from Charles Baker. When you bring up this data, it has Gina's name and it has base clear, maximum Fahrenheit, minimum Fahrenheit and rain, okay? The rain is the total rain for the entire year. And the maximum and minimum temperatures, those are the extreme temperatures. And so what I did was, you know, just for out of fun, I sorted the data by the maximum temperature. So the maximum extreme temperature. And I found some really interesting information. Now, you know, some of the ones that have the lowest, in other words, where they grow in the habitat never goes below a certain temperature, like 65 degrees for some Sartokylums, for example, 
But one of the things that I found that were really interesting is dendrobiums. Now, there's some dendrobiums that grow, like looks at, look at this, for example, dendrobium curvimentum. There are a lot of dendrobiums that grow in areas that are very warm or that you think it would be very warm. So for example, this dendrobium grows in Irian Jaya in Indonesia. And there's a weather station that is at a very low altitude, but then the records were adjusted for where this orchid grows and it grows at 8,200 feet. And so if you're gonna look at 8,200 feet, when an orchid is growing at 8,200 feet in altitude, I mean, it's, this is like air conditioned. It's like it's permanently air conditioned. Why would you grow this thing? I don't, I don't know that you could grow it in a, you know, maybe in a wine cellar with some lights where, the, you know, a wine cellar where the temperature never varies all throughout the year. But look at that, it's a dendrobium from, this dendrobium is from Western New Guinea. And it's found at 7,200 to 9,350 feet. So it's very, very high in altitude. And that is why, you know, it, it, the, the extreme temperatures, it never goes below 66 degrees. This thing you could probably not grow in Florida. I'm just guessing. And you can look at other dendrobiums that are the same. Here's several others that are the same. And then some Mastavalias and so on. Now, if I wanted to say, instead of my maximum temperature, let's say that I wanted to sort it by minimum temperatures. So I'm gonna click there, it's gonna take a little while to sort. It, it, it looks like it's not doing anything, but it's sorting, there it is. These are orchids that have a minimum temperature. So the record extreme minimum is minus 35 degrees Fahrenheit. What are they? They're cypripediums, okay? Cypripediums, macranthus, ventricosum, uh, cypripedium macaulay, parviflorum. You know, they're probably surviving under the dirt for the winter. You know, the bulbs are surviving, you know, under the dirt for the winter. And that's why. You can see they're very extreme temperatures where they, in their habitats where they grow. And you see the stations are coming from Minneapolis, St. Paul uh, for, the, for the streams. Now, what I'm interested in is the other part. So let's take that all the way down and let's look at minimum temperatures. What orchids have a minimum temperature that it's very high? And you see there's some dendrobiums that have a minimum temperature that is very high as well. Dendrobiums are quite variable in that way. But if I go up and I go past my dendrobiums, I start look, finding a lot of Phalaenopsis. Look, Phalaenopsis here that never go below 66 degrees Fahrenheit. Phalaenopsis speciosa, gigantea, never go below 66 degrees Fahrenheit in the wild. And that's interesting because, you know, Phalaenopsis are the, are the plants that we grow indoors. And indoors, we never go below that either, you know, because of climate control that we have indoors. That's why we grow a lot of those orchids indoors. But if you go to this screen, it's an interesting one to explore as well. If you look at orchid ways at the top, there's a menu at the top, a top menu, go search list articles and so on. And if you say list, you can list awards, orchids most hybridized, orchids most awarded, highest awarded and so on. I'm going to go into orchids most awarded, which I'd already opened up earlier. And I pulled out all the orchids that were the most awarded by the American Orchid Society. So you see Calia purpurata, as the most awards by the American Orchid Society, followed by Papsukakuliae. And if I wanted, and see, this is since 1932. So if I wanted to say just the last five years, I'm gonna click, okay, let's look at orchid species that have been awarded in the last five years. And I'm clicking here, see, I selected species and I selected the AOS and I click list. And you see uh, that Warianthi skinneri or Cattleya skinneri is the one that is the most awarded, followed by Cattleya purpurata. So if I wanted to look at Warianthi skinneri, for example, I can click on the image and then profile. And you see that it, it flowers in April, May, June, especially in May is when it, when it flowers. And we can look at temperatures. And this is one that grows well in Southern Florida. I notice a lot of people in this color from Southern Florida. And you see the temperatures, they don't really vary that much. You know, they're fairly warm temperatures throughout the year. And as far as rain, 
the humidity is less in the winter in the winter months. It, it's kind of like that as well for this orchid from its habitat, which is listed as San Jose, Costa Rica. And you see in the in San Jose, Costa Rica, it is uh, actually he adjusted the temperatures for an elevation of 2,500 feet, but the rainfall should be about the same. And in San Jose, you see that it starts raining in May and goes through November, and it's dry just like in Miami. In the winter time, it's it's dry. So you see, it's kind of very similar to Miami in, in some ways. So this would be one that would grow well in Miami. Let's look at something else, Calia purpurata. Let's see what they're using for this. So let me click on the image again and then profile. Let's look at temperatures. He is using the he's using the city of Porto Alegre. It's a very southern city in Brazil. In the Rio Grande do Sul is the name of the state. You see record extreme temperatures, 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Look at the cool temperature. It's actually, the temperatures actually go negative. It's so far south in Brazil that the, ne the temperatures actually go negative. So it's, it's fairly variable. If we look at uh, rainfall and rest period, there's the rainfall. It, it's fairly constant. Humidity 70 to 80% most of the year, dropping near 65% for two or three months. Let's look at Sandariana. Okay, so Sandariana. So here, so if you click cultivate here, see that that cultivate. So we're we're in the uh, profile for a species, and we're going to click cultivate. Actually, any of these will give us that information, but we're going to click cultivate. So once you click cultivate, it says climate right there in the middle. It says climate station. Station number, Davao, Philippines. And then it will say for that station what the latitude and longitude are and what the altitude is for that climate station. So for that climate station in Davao, Philippines, it has latitude, longitude, and the altitude for that climate station. Now, after that, it sometimes says the following. Temperatures are calculated for an elevation off a thousand feet, resulting in probable extremes off, and then a high temperature and a low temperature. Where you know that he's made that adjustment is that you are looking here at the climate station that says 88 feet right there, but then he says temperatures are calculated for an elevation of a thousand feet. So he made that adjustment in this case. Now, let's look at some orchids with rest periods and see information for those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for Catacetum piliatum. Catacetums are famous for having a rest period. So I'm going to type piliatum here, bring it up, click on Catacetum piliatum. And then again, uh, let's bring up seasons. So piliatum uh, grows flowers, you see here the information from Bert Hamilton, it flowers towards end of summer and, and fall. And then you look at precipitation. See, precipitation is very, it starts uh, getting very high for the summer. Uh, it, it looks like it, it rains a lot before it flies. First it rains a lot and then it flowers is kind of what it looks like from this data. You look at temperatures, they're very, they're, they're fairly high temperatures. And all this information is coming from the city of Manaus in Brazil. So Manaus in Brazil is, a, is right in the middle. It's this big, big city, millions of people, I think, two or three million people, I'm not sure, but it's right in the middle of the Amazonian jungle. The altitude is very low, only 144 feet, uh, but the temperatures are calculated for an elevation of 500 feet, where this orchid has been found at. Now, if I'm gonna click, if I click here on precipitation, there's my rest period information. So you see growing temperatures should be maintained all year. Rainfall is low in winter, but in the habitat, some additional moisture is available in the form of heavy dew. Cultivated plants should dry out after leaves drop in autumn, but they should, oh, by the way, I forgot to say this is deciduous, so that the leaves will drop in the autumn, but they should be watered if pseudobulbs start shriveling. Fertilizer should be eliminated until watering is resumed in the spring. So here's an example of an orchid 
that has a, a rest period. And that's very important. That's one thing you want to look at is the rest period. That's very important for the orchids uh, that you research. Another orchid that we can look at that also has a rest period is Dendrobium nobile. A lot of the dendrobiums are deciduous and a lot of them have rest periods. And so if I look at Dendrobium nobile, I'm gonna click profile from here. I see it flowers February, March, April. Let's look at our rainfall. Now you see rainfall is low in February, March, April. This information is coming from uh, the city of Chiang Mai, and it's in Northern Thailand, and they actually have all, they also have a flower festival there. These cities where they have flower festivals like Chiang Mai and Baguio and Medellin in Colombia, you know, they're a really ideal, they're, they're high altitude, really ideal places to grow orchids. Uh, and this is one example. So Dendrobium nobile, the climate station he used is Chiang Mai in Thailand. And you see humidity, the rain is very heavy there starting in May. May, June, July, August, September, very heavy rain. And then look at the rain in the, in the winter months. This is the popular area for tourists to go there, which is starting in November, December, January, February, very little rain. But then it gets very hot here. March, April, May gets very hot. But there is a rest period. In those months, it can, it can get quite cool. And so there's a rest period here. If you look at winter days, average 76 to 82 degrees, and nights 48 to 49 degrees Fahrenheit. That's quite cool. And so if you go on here, it should say that there's a rest period for dendrobium no, no bill. Let's see. During very cold weather, plants' ch chance of surviving with minimal damage is better if it is dry when temperatures are low. Growers report that the plants from this habitat do tolerate light frost. Rainfall averages are very low for four to five months in the winter, but during the early part of the season, the high relative humidity indicates that additional moisture is available from frequent fog, mist, and heavy deposits of dew. Growers sometimes recommend eliminating water in the wintertime. Charles Baker also used Chiang Mai for quite a few other orchids. 